Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope everyone is having a good week so far. Today, I'm back with another Funko Pop, particularly the custom Absolute Carnage Deluxe Pop. Taken straight from the cover of Absolute Carnage number one, this figure features the symbiote posing menacingly on top of the headstones of Eddie Brock, aka Venom, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Steve Rogers, Captain America, and Logan, who is, of course, Wolverine. Uh, with a pile of skulls, all Terminator 2 style, kind of scattered around them. It's a cool looking piece, and I hope we get more of these diorama, diorama pops in the future. So for those that don't know who Carnage is, he is hands down one of Spider-Man's scariest enemies. By now, everybody pretty much knows who Venom is to some degree. Originally, the Venom symbiote is an alien from outer space that is brought to Earth and tries to bond itself to Spider-Man. And after... Spider-Man realizes the danger of the alien, he gets rid of it, and it finds a second host who also has an equal hatred for Peter Parker, and that is Eddie Brock. Well, one day Eddie Brock finds himself in jail, and in this cell next to him happens to be Cletus Cassidy, a deranged serial killer with no conscience at all, who kills for the pure enjoyment of it. This is a bad man. He's got no redeeming qualities at all. And as expected, in comic book fashion, uh, from the 90s especially, the Venom symbiote coincidentally reproduces at that very time uh, and produces a new spawn that then attaches itself to Cassidy. And things from here get very, very bad. Carnage will go on to be an absolute terror. He's stronger and more powerful than Venom by far, whom was already outclassing Spider-Man in just about every way if it wasn't for his weakness of loud sounds to exploit. He could regenerate at a remarkable pace and once again go all Terminator 2 and transform his body and limbs into all sorts of dangerous weapons. Well, uh, with Venom, it's two entities in one physical form, which is why Venom often says we, like we are Venom. But Brock and, but in that case, Brock and Venom kind of, they both have their own personalities intact. But in the case of Carnage, the two sociopathic personalities are so perfectly matched that there is no we. They are just one singular being. Uh, so Spider-Man and Venom would have to eventually team up, bitterly of course, to even have a chance against Carnage. Now I read Absolute Carnage, which was a huge Marvel, Marvel event a couple years ago, and I loved it. I thought the artwork and storytelling was, was great. It... it went into a very interesting direction and it let some things really, um, you know, for the future, there was a lot of potential there, which now that I can say, you know, as that was a couple of years ago, now that those things have happened, it, it did go into really cool direction. So it was all, the potential was met, but that's getting too far besides the point. Uh, but to me, Maximum Carnage will always be the special Carnage story. And not because of really the quality of it, but it was just so unabashedly 90s. And even though I grew up in the 90s and didn't really get into comics yet, Maximum Carnage meandered into my living room on Saturday mornings on cartoons, onto gaming consoles. It, it dominated toy stores. It was really my first encounter with a huge comic event. And the storyline wasn't even all that good. It wasn't The Killing Joke or Craven's Last Hunt. Those are examples of like literature in comic book form. But it, it goes to show the potential power of lightning in a bottle. And no matter how well an idea is conceptualized and drawn out, sometimes you just can't match the power of selling toys. Carnage himself is as much a, representat a representation of the 90s comics as any character that I know of, for good or bad. He's dark, twisted, and edgy but ultimately just a ripoff he's a hybrid character of venom who is already established and then dc is the joker so yet that was enough to fuel the uh, to fuel the character to heights that very few villains ever reach during a particular time and that was the inspiration i took with this pop uh sure it's mostly just a repaint but i wanted to portray carnage at his most menacing which is pretty much to me still when he was brand new on the scene from making the headstones and skulls more realistic and less like an art piece, from making some of the reds on Carnage himself more blood red rather than the orange red of Absolute Carnage, 
adding more black on his face and mouth and making the symbiote look more alive, trying to at least. This was actually my first time doing clay work on a pop because I had to cover the symbol on the original pop's forehead. So the result hopefully blends in enough, but I, I had to sand that symbol down and then add layers to make it look like the black parts of the symbiote were sprawling all over his head. It was a good sculpting experience and for the first time I was pretty happy with it. Um, you know, so I think this is going to be where I pretty much put a wrap on this video. Uh, you know, I have a lot of content I'm working on uploading. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, this is your reminder to subscribe or thumbs up this video. Stick around. Peace.